techies, techettes. What an interesting predicament we're in right now. NVIDIA is holding back the virtual RAM inside of your GPU. A beta driver came across the pond over in China and they scrubbed it directly off their site because it unlocked the other half. Miners instantly went from a 24 to all the way up to a 48 mega hash power, which means your FPS, if it was cut in half, was more than likely because of the last shitty ass driver. My name is Mac here at the MacGyver 7 channel. Today we're going to be breaking down the newer driver of 461.92 to try to conquer over the 461.72, which destroyed a lot of people's entry portions of just trying to play their games. On top of that, there's a circumvent for Windows I would suggest go ahead and install that will give your ecosystem a nice platform. For once, Windows seems like it's doing really well, but guess what, the hardware accelerator ain't working. Let's hop into the patch notes, we're gonna hop into some benchmarks, and we're gonna break this down step by step to see is this driver good enough for you to install. This article will be linked down below from Tarm's Hardware, one of the really good nice brief reads, but basically gives you the 411 on what happens with the hash rate and what happened with the BIOS firmware that ended up going to limit it. Remember, NVIDIA can't put a chip that doesn't exist inside of there, but they sure as hell can change the driver in order to limit certain things. For most technical people, this will also be listed down below for the 460 driver directly from NVIDIA to read through all their lovely PDF. The one I'm going to go to is directly from their Reddit, which is a lot easier to consume. But before we do that, we're going to take a good glimpse at what ends up happening with the newer driver. Now, I have some benchmarks already lined up. We're going to take a little teaser, dip into it, and see exactly what is going down with the DirectX 12 for Time Spy Extreme. So your 4K play, is it good? I also lined up the original FPS giver for gameplay for a lot of people who remember that there was the 436.02 that just whooped ass and gave us a whole bunch of stuff. But... NVIDIA has made some progress since that driver. I thought maybe reverting back might actually, well, produce some FPS, and it was actually the opposite. So a lot of fun stuff has come down to play, but a lot of confusing stuff is still out there for most people to say, look, I just want to play my damn game. I don't care about money. I don't care about cryptocurrency. I just want my FPS back. And you should. Quite frankly, this is not acceptable. So the highlighted driver that I have over here on the left, utilizing the 3D Marks engine to show, is going to be the old original driver, the 436. Now, one of the things that I did notice is that the temperature is a hell of a lot easier to manage directly inside of this versus what ends up happening with the newer drivers. Once they introduce the 30 series in that lovely tensor core of RTX and all that fun stuff, it just went hotter and hotter. And yeah, you gain just a tiny bit, but quite frankly, the degradarity of your video card is not worth it in that kind of heat, unless you got like a really cool custom water block that goes on there or using some liquid metal, which all are enthusiast builds. But when we compare that to what our new driver and old driver are and the way that i line it up is the new driver is going to be on the right hardware accelerator on on the top and hardware accelerator off on the bottom so the old driver will be on the left matching these up we can see that well there is a lot of night and day differences but it seems like the old driver comes out just a tiny bit a percentage wise there's barely any change so you're still probably going to have some fps issues what i would suggest is toggle off that hardware accelerator Though the ecosystem has finally been ironed out a little bit with Windows, it's very, very just ridiculous that you have to turn off the hardware accelerator to actually see some FPS gain. But the stability is there. So let's go ahead and jump into what our patch notes are before we digest the rest of the benchmarks. Some of the highlighted portions for the game ready driver inside of the GeForce portion of delivering optimum experience in the latest games and introduce blah 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 they're hoping to fix Overwatch. So moving on past that and we can already see in 4K you're not going to really gain anything but 4K is pretty tough on cards for the most part and that's one of the reasons why I like to use it as the teaser. Now one of the things that you'll start to see is there's a full list of stuff that they're going to be fixes. So as far as the desktop application may flicker no more when the stuttering for as far as what ends up happening with resizing the window and some PC configurations. Specifically for the 1660 Super, random flickering may appear across the top of the monitor on some of the PC configuration. Vulcan for Red Dead Redemption 2, the game may display some pixelated black dots that artifact on characters. So it seems like they got smallpox almost. That's horrible. 
because that would be actually time relevant in RDR2. But that should not be an issue right now. And if you are still experiencing issues or further issues with installing this driver, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what you have to show. Rocket League comes down to a portion where it matches and may take longer to load. No more, they say. The shader and the cache and the optimizations have been made to reduce the intermittent stutters for as far as PC and the configuration on Fortnite. Detroit become human, games crashing when launching and the image sharpening enabled should no longer be there. And on top of that, we scroll down to see what ends up happening for as far as Dungeons and Fighters. The game may blink when choosing characters. Zoom for the GeForce experience in-game overlay launches when zoom meets the starts well, on top of that situation for the nvidia surround sound 4k hdmi 2.1 tvs may fail no more blue screen caches may occur for as far as the connecting and disconnecting for as far as the samsung 8 TV for the lucky few that actually have that and or can afford a freaking $40,000 TV or something around that. It's crazy. 8K is not cheap. So as we go down, there's going to be a lot of open issues that you can kind of see we're going to highlight. And as we go down, not as many as you think there would be some for Rainbow Six. Um, got your wow shadows and lands. We have the Supreme Commanders and Supreme Commanders 2. All these are going to be in from down from the smoke appearance and pixelization to random flickers in certain locations and the game experiencing lower FPS, which is not good that they're still experiencing lower FPS. If they had let us have that beta driver, I would have been very curious. And quite frankly, one of the bad things that came from it was when I went to go grab it, it was wiped. They completely treated that like it did not exist when it probably would have saved a lot of gamers to actually gain the FPS and fix some issues. So they need to pull their stuff together and Quite frankly, I would not mind if they just like had us on a waiting list be like, oh, you're a gamer. What's your gamer tag or what do you use on Steam? Give us something that we can identify ourselves because the miners may be gamers, but a majority of them are not. I think that that's a great calling card instead of their stupid AI system that never works when everything sells out and it seems like a paper launch. But moving on past, we have Arkham Knight on the issues that are open. As we can see that the game crashes when the turbulence smokes and enabled, you can see that the VR shutters within lags and occurs when launching the GPU hardware and the monitoring in the background. The G-Sync is also an issue for as far as the GPU consumption may increase in the idle, and the system may be higher than refresh rate on that monitor. YouTube playback is still a shuttering issue for as far as scrolling down on the page, and some notebooks for the Pascal may have some higher refresh rates for as far as displaying when going into the drop zone of 60 hertz during gameplay. With that being said, it's time for benchmarks, ladies and gentlemen. As we start to finish off DirectX 12 in the 1080p department, this is where you start to see the shine of yesterday's driver. The 436 may lack the hardware accelerating toggle off and on, but it does offer a consistency for as far as that when you match it up to the newer driver, it shatters it. You gain back FPS, literally. Now looking back at the new driver versus old driver, oddly enough, when you look over here, for some weird reason, the old driver, with hardware accelerator off and the new Windows ecosystem, why well, I definitely recommend updating, randomly starts working. Now again, all these are not percentage jumps. You're still sitting around the same lake. We're not seeing like something drastic, which I believe Nvidia should be able to produce nowadays. But let's go ahead and look at our fire strike before we pull up Port Royale for our tensor cores. Now this is where you start to see that the old driver and the new driver actually start to produce. As you can see that the old driver, 436, one of the old school ones that gave us back FPS was, was a groundbreaking portion for 1080p and the DirectX 11, which almost everyone uses in game development for the most part, it produced. Look at that. Now if you look at the new one, holy crap, hardware accelerator on and we're making FPS. And this is where they limit it all. Percentage drops. Literally by 1% on majority of them with hardware accelerator off, you can see a huge tank. So that would be horrible. On top of that, you can see it being a little bit of a rival for as far as the newer driver. But again, with your hardware accelerator on with a new driver, if you're using 1080p, this driver is going to produce for you. And if it's not, make sure you toggle it off and on and you will start to see the difference of what's going on. 
Now again, some of these things may be limited again by Nvidia and their crappy writing right now. Quite frankly, they should be producing a lot better for us or at least let us have the beta drivers. You know, like if you have a GPU and it's limited and there's a beta driver that can fix that, why not just give them the beta driver? It makes the most sense. Now we're looking at our extreme. We're looking for more heavier inputs for as far as 1080p overclocked goodness. You can see that there's a lot to be contested for as far as the 436 versus the 461.92. The brand new driver definitely does produce a little bit with the hardware accelerator off. Wait, why am I toggling off and on? This should not be a thing. Now, when we look at driver to driver from the previous, the 7.2 to 9.2, we will start to see in the 60 series of the 400, we will get to... to well, it seems like the old driver kind of wins a little bit with the hardware accelerator on. It seems like it's bat ass crazy at this portion in time, but the old driver without the hardware accelerator off just does its thing and it runs a little cooler. So there are some options you can pick for as far as this if you are being limited for as far as going down. But how does it size up in 4K? Because a lot of this is not percentage changing like the last one with the 1080p department. This is literally where the old 436 stills the show. Cooler temperatures, better performance in 4K. You don't have to toggle on any bullshit for as far as hardware accelerate on and off because Windows doesn't know how to talk to Nvidia and Nvidia doesn't know how to talk to Windows. They act like they're two different entities, even though they run off the same ecosystem. We're supposed to run in tandem, guys, not running the opposite direction. So when we look at the newer driver and older driver in this 4060 series of BS seems like, we can see that there are some definite changes for as far as that. With the older driver, it's definitely still in the show in a lot of the portions, but in our older, older driver, it kicks its ass. Now looking at the situation for as far as what we're gonna do, again, hardware accelerator off and on, on is gonna win against the newer driver where it seems like the off wins. That's kind of confusing, but let's go ahead and take a look at our Port Royale and we can sew this up for should I install this? Now, as we take a look, the 436 versus the 460 series that we're going to contend against, you can see that, well, it doesn't really contend that well. Though the temperatures may be a little bit lower, it definitely does drop a percentile. Now, looking at for as far as the 7.2 versus 9.2, we're going to see some drastic differences. Hardware accelerator off is definitely the winner inside of this situation with the newer driver versus hardware accelerator on and the newer driver loses. So what we are going to sum up in this whole situation is if you are a 1080p player and you're experiencing issues, the newer driver is probably going to win just barely. Does Nvidia need to start producing a 470.50? which doesn't exist that helps us as gamers gain back what we bought. Yes, absolutely. This is quite frankly unacceptable and they need to be more forthright with our company of what we are doing is gaming. So I don't get why we have to wait for another mystical 436 to appear out of the wild, like some like mythical Pokemon just for us to play our games. So. I'm going to leave this up to everyone at this point in time. If you're 1080p, you should probably. If you're 4K, you shouldn't. And it's only in DirectX 11 where it really benefits. So with that being said, everyone, if you are new to the network, you can always like, share, and subscribe. Absolutely free and helps me out as a creator. I'd love to hear your comments and what issues are still at large in this whole portion of the gaming community. You and alone and us as a whole define what is happening for them to actually fix stuff and if we speak loud enough and we basically spread everything around the web things happen things change power to the people power to the gamers everyone i'll see you guys and gals in the near future stay safe stay classy and if you subscribe today who knows maybe nvidia will make another 436 in the 460 series and just you know hit a home run for once i think that would actually be nice and if they can dial down some lower temperatures i'd be even happier but everyone have a nice day and see you in the future.